in the howling darkness of the end. Men will become monsters. But hope will ride with those courageous enough to carry the flame. Hello everybody, my name is Element5, and as most of you know by now, two days ago, February 19th, Red Hook released this short teaser titled The Howling End, and made the official announcement that they are in fact developing Darkest Dungeon 2. Ever since that moment, my inbox has been absolutely flooded with questions about if I know anything about the game or what to expect, and given that we are only two days out from the announcement, there's very little information to go on, Thankfully, we can all let out a big collective sigh of relief knowing that Red Hook is going to continue working with Power Up Audio, the incredible voice of Wayne June, and the music of Stuart Chatwood. And I think with what we've been given so far, which includes the announcement itself, the exclusive interview with PC Gamer, the teaser, and the collective wisdom of the modding community, we can start to suss out some very early expectations. Now, while they didn't give out much detail, Red Hook's Tyler Sigmund and Chris Barassa spoke exclusively with PC Gamer this week confirming development of a sequel to Darkest Dungeon, touching a bit on the game's direction, and when asked what interested them about making a Darkest Dungeon sequel, they said, We love our dysfunctional cast of characters, our atmosphere and our world, and we have a lot more story we want to tell. They go on to say that they are committed to crafting Darkest Dungeon 2 to be its own experience, with its own creative and thematic identity, and that Darkest Dungeon 2 is a game about enduring a grueling journey, not cleaning up your backyard, which will give players a glimpse of the supernatural apocalypse twisting and distorting the world beyond the estate. So, we know the game takes on a much broader scale than DD1, far outside the confines of our cozy hamlet, and the teaser features six of the game's more notable characters, standing in what looks to be an ominous and frozen snow-capped mountain range. Now, obviously, Darkest Dungeon is based on the cosmic horror genre and the works of H.P. Lovecraft, and it stands to reason that this next chapter in the story might have something to do with Lovecraft's influential 1931 sci-fi novella, At the Mountains of Madness, in which the narrator, Dr. William Dyer, recalls the detailed events of his disastrous expedition to the Antarctic continent in the hope of deterring explorers who wish to return. Now, spoilers here in case you're looking to read at the Mountains of Madness, and uh, again, this is purely fun speculation at this point, but there are numerous reasons beyond just a snowy mountain atmosphere why this particular story lay a pretty good groundwork for a Darkest Dungeon sequel. Given the events of the story, the strong first-person narrative, the setting for a group of explorers on a grueling journey, and the kind of cosmic horrors found along the way. Now, in the book, William Dyer's account of the disastrous expedition begins with the story of his colleague, Dr. Lake, who took a group of men in search of fossils and discovered a massive mountain range, reportedly taller than the Himalayas, as well as a vast underground network of tunnels filled with strange, undocumented creatures. Once Lake's party goes missing, Dyer, accompanied by a graduate student called Danforth, set out to find Lake's base camp, and they eventually do so along with Lake and his men, either gruesomely killed or missing, and six star-shaped snow mounds covering some of the unique life forms. Now, back in the airplane, they set out to find the remaining members of Lake's team, and they come across a giant mountain range which they identify to be the functional outer walls of a vast ancient an abandoned stone city with oddly foreign architecture, soon determined to be built by a lost civilization dubbed the Elder Things, due to their hieroglyphic resemblance to creatures of myth mentioned in the Necronomicon. The city's murals also reveal that the Elder Things first came to Earth shortly after formation of the moon, and established their civilization with the help of what are known as Shogoths. Now, the plot thickens as explorers learn about the Elder Things' conflict with both the Star Spawn of Cthulhu and the Mego, first identified in Lovecraft's short story The Whisperer in Darkness, and city murals also allude to an unnamed evil lurking within an even larger mountain range located beyond the city. 
Eventually, the explorers are drawn towards the entrance of a tunnel and are then confronted by what they identify to be a Shogoth, a terrible, indescribable thing vaster than any subway train, a shapeless congeries of protoplasmic bubbles, faintly self-luminous, and with myriads of temporary eyes forming and unforming as pustules of greenish light all over the tunnel-filling front that bore down upon us, crushing the frantic penguins and slithering over the glistening floor that it and its kind had swept so evilly free of all litter. They narrowly escaped their encounter with the Shogoth, board the plain where high above the plateau, Danforth looks back to see something which causes him to lose all sanity, implied to be the unnamed evil itself. Now, At the Mountains of Madness is one of Lovecraft's most influential pieces, and it nearly became a feature film in 2006, uh, was set to be directed by Guillermo del Toro, joined by producers Tom Cruise and James Cameron, but unfortunately got shot down on the notion that del Toro felt it had to have an R rating. But nonetheless, with snow-capped mountains, a grueling expedition far outside the hamlet, and creatures straight out of the Necronomicon and canon to the Cthulhu mythos, this seems more than an adequate story and setting to provide the necessary backdrop and foundation to a sequel game all its own. Now, when asked about gameplay changes in DD2, Chris and Tyler assured PC Gamer that the combat system is making a return, but added that they're giving it a, quote, significant tune-up, both mechanically and in terms of presentation. So it's reasonable to expect that we'll see new and improved mechanics in Darkest Dungeon 2, improvements the likes of which we probably saw born out of the last major build and the Color of Madness patch. But more interestingly, we can also expect to see improvements in terms of presentation, and it's hard to know exactly what they mean by that. Now, in my opinion, Red Hook have already established what I would consider to be the greatest looking, sounding, and most visceral feeling presentation as applied to two-dimensional turn-based combat that I've ever experienced. It's a huge aspect of its game's successes, is a primary reason the game feels replayable, it's why the game can be such an emotional experience, why it's fun to watch in the first place, and I think it's part of the reason we should all be so grateful for the existence of Wayne June. The way is still blocked, but less people will be eaten. Just in general, across the board, games which compare or attempt to present themselves as being similar to Darkest Dungeon simply fall short, as the bar in terms of presentation is just incredibly high, wherein the overall strategy and mechanics of other games might be similar, their feel and presentation is frankly nowhere near as interesting. So with such an already established and strong presentation in Darkest Dungeon 1, there seem to be two competing schools of thought in the community on a possible presentation change in Darkest Dungeon 2, that either they'll retain the very same core design aspects of DD1 with slight expansions, or we'll see a drastic change to the presentation altogether. So if on the one hand we take the blue pill and consider the more conservative improvement on core design path, there are actually a handful of reasonable presentation improvements we could ostensibly see out of a new Darkest Dungeon, and it's kind of fun to speculate what those could be, including better and more polished animations or effects. Simply an improved engine with revamped character spines or effects would help the game feel a bit more modern and make the original characters feel a bit refreshed. A more intuitive interface could improve player experience and be slightly less daunting for new players. One of the pain points of learning to play DD is the overwhelm of its interface. While it does a good job of presenting a lot of information in a relatively small space, and I think doing so in a beautifully themed overlay, players are generally slow to learn the significance of the complexities of gameplay and what they're seeing, like stats and torchlight, how turns are decided, that characters have marks that denote that turns are remaining, etc. Minor, subtle simplifications could do well to make the game more available. One of my personal favorites is the simple idea that armor and weapon upgrades could apply model changes to characters as you level them. A decent example of how you could improve upon presentation in a purely aesthetic detail 
which could help attach the player to individual characters and progression more so than just color palettes. Now, assuming that we instead take the red pill, see how far the rabbit hole goes and entertain some of the more dramatic change ideas, then we could be confronted with a significant shift to the way that combat is handled and presented in DD2. As an example, the movement from four heroes to six hero parties. The original teaser for Darkest Dungeon featured at first a group of heroes approaching a dungeon, but then showcase what the four hero combat setup would ultimately look like. The fact that we're left with this particular arrangement of six familiar heroes in the new teaser has some people in the community thinking that an innovative way to change up the pacing and combat of Darkest Dungeon would be to increase the party size from four to six, and ostensibly that this notion is being hinted at by the new teaser. Now we might just be reading into things too much here, and a lot goes into how that might work, which brings us to our next point, which is looking at a less 2D approach in DD2. Some of the modding community have remarked about the significance of Red Hook hiring a 3D environment artist, which is believed to have happened back in November of this year, and that this addition to the team implies a dramatic shift to the way Darkest Dungeon might look and feel. Now again, this is pure speculation, but if we are to see the move, say, from four hero groups to six character groups, that could account for a move away from the standard 2D format we're used to and allow for a more complex, row-oriented setup that feels a bit more like a JRPG, in which combat is still functionally quite similar to how it plays currently, but contains a bit more depth and complexity, a sort of 2.5D diorama which would allow for larger groups. Others have speculated that we could even be seeing more 3D movements and environments altogether, either in combat or in the world, but still retain the two-dimensional character feel represented by games in the style of something like Don't Starve. Whatever the case, it's clear Red Hook has a lot of room to play here, and whether or not we should expect drastic changes in the presentation of DD2, the team has now tripled its size since it was the tiny five-person group they started out as when DD first launched. And they've stated that they anticipate adding another half dozen members in the coming 18 months. So while producing a sequel presents a mountain of new work, and some of these changes sound like a pretty big deal, they've already laid a fantastic foundation and have demonstrated to be a team who can get things done. Well, let's talk about the metagame. One of the most important notes from the PC Gamer interview was Red Hook's mention of working with a completely different metagame structure. Now, according to prominent members of the community, this essentially refers to the new, broader scope of progression and gameplay as applied to DD2, and the fact that we know we're no longer settled in the Hamlet. According to Red Hook, they'll be giving players a glimpse of the supernatural apocalypse twisting and distorting the world beyond the estate. So, how does that define a new metagame for Darkest Dungeon 2. Well, whether or not the game is seated now in the Mountains of Madness, so long as we're not in the Hamlet, chances are likely we'll see a major shift to aspects of game progression as well as many of the systems. If, for example, we're no longer investing heirlooms and rebuilding our cozy, broken Hamlet, then it stands to reason we could be using a similar currency to purchase, establish, and maybe even maintain a sort of roaming caravan and or base camps as we move through harsh terrain. The idea of characters enduring a grueling journey or expedition would seem to lay the groundwork for something like a more survival or resource-oriented linear progression than exists in DD1. And given the environment, possible we could even see the addition of a temperature mechanic in place of or in conjunction with the stress and torchlight mechanics. Additionally, if we're no longer receiving new characters via the stagecoach each week, then it begs the question, just how will we obtain them? Now, playing off of Mountains of Madness, it's reasonable to assume characters could show up similarly to the stagecoach either by plane or boat, but many are speculating that at overhauling this system, either by finding or freeing characters throughout the journey, or something like limiting the characters you have in total, could help foster a deeper sense of meaning and achievement to outcomes in game. We should also expect to see all new dungeons, which could ostensibly be standout locations and environments from the story, such as mountain passes, tunnels, the stone city itself, the ocean, 
and mountain peaks. And occupying those zones, of course, would be brand new enemies, the likes of which are already well represented in Mountains of Madness and throughout the Cthulhu mythos. But whatever the case, enemies and bosses are something Red Hook does extremely well, we're guaranteed to see new ones, and it's reasonable to assume some of Dee Dee's characters, enemies or not, will be returning in some fashion, whether that simply be reskinned or entirely reimagined altogether. The inevitable question paired with any teaser, especially for something as exciting as Darkest Dungeon 2, is what is the release date and when can we expect to play it? Many in the modding community seem to think that the earliest we could see the game would be December of this year or even the fall, uh, but what we do know is that when asked about a development structure for DD2, Red Hook replied that they're going to be going with an early access model. They said it's no secret that we're big fans of the EA model, but we're also advocates for only doing early access if it makes sense for the specific game. Although there are some massive differences in structure between DD1 and DD2, the sequel is still very appropriate for EA. They added that they're eager to get the game into the hands of fans quicker, kick the tires of the system, and give those fans the opportunity to help shape the game as it's developed. Early access is also really great for being able to alter your production plan depending on reception. A big reception can be a clear signal to invest even more in the project and pull in some of the wishlist items and turn them into a reality. So we know we'll definitely be seeing Darkest Dungeon 2 in early access, and I would bet a very decent reception given what we've seen in the last couple days. And given just how well Red Hook has listened to and supported its community, I personally see no problem with this plan whatsoever. We'll have to just wait and see, and you can trust that Red Hook is not going to be rushing to release an unfinished product, or at least something that isn't very close. In the meantime, what does this mean for Darkest Dungeon? Is Darkest Dungeon 1 suddenly an obsolete game destined to be the collector of dust shelved for all eternity? Uh, as if we still own physical copies of games. Well, absolutely not. Not only does Red Hook aim to make Darkest Dungeon 2 its own unique and different experience from DD1, an altogether different feeling game, but Darkest Dungeon has proven itself to be a rather unique and a good deal timeless product in its own right. It has remarkable replayability. The game is available on multiple platforms now, including console and iOS. And if you own it on PC, you also have access to the vast, varied, and incredible collection of free mods for this game. The modding community is remarkable for Darkest Dungeon, an incredible source of free high quality content to keep the game interesting and challenging. And we're smack in the middle of the official Darkest Dungeon mini boss contest on Red Hook's Discord, showcasing the incredible talent in this community and the many different fully functional mini boss mods being voted on right now that were just released. Moonlit Dungeon, the largest overhaul mod and modding hub for Darkest Dungeon, are deep in development as we speak, with tons of new features and enemies on the way, with the latest major update just around the corner. So this community is only emboldened by the announcement of DD2, as it now guarantees that we'll have years of incredible content, better modding tools, and improved systems ahead of us. Not to mention the latest patch notes for DD contains a huge and important feature with a massive increase in optimization and doubling resources available for modders. So, if you're new to Darkest Dungeon, or have just never gotten around to completing it, have not yet dipped a toe into modded content, you're not alone and there's no greater time than right now. This game and its DLC are frequently on sale, made super affordable on Steam and markets like Humble, and I would assume we'll see those deals only become more frequent as development of DD2 continues. And if you're interested in learning more about Darkest Dungeon mods or how to play them, then this channel and the MLD community are a great place to start. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things Darkest Dungeon and future updates about the development of DD2. And let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see out of a Darkest Dungeon sequel. And remember to join us live on twitch.tv slash element5 and in the MLD Discord as we'll be continuing to talk about the coming sequel as information presents itself and in the meantime, enjoying all the fun and challenging content this game and the community has to offer. Thanks everybody, see you next time.